There has never been a better time than now to come join the Belicio Foods team. Belicio has a new contract in place with plenty of awesome perks for their employees. From increased wages, access to the free health clinic, vacation after six months, and much more, Belicio Foods is committed to putting their employees first. For more information or to apply, visit BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Take advantage of these great new employee benefits and join the Belicio team today. Visit BelicioFoods.com slash careers to learn more. Comedy returns to Park's Edge Events Center just in time for Valentine's Day. Grab a loved one, your friends, and your family, and enjoy a night of food, drinks, and laughs with Karen Jaffe and Andy Frampton. Tickets are on sale now at enjoyparksedge.com. Get your tickets for the best Valentine's Day since your crush left that note in your locker your freshman year. It's Valentine's Day Comedy, Saturday, February 12th. Tickets on sale now at enjoyparksedge.com. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Morning Show right here on Main Street TV. And, of course, your friend Jennifer here to start off the morning with a couple of guys that are going to be singing here in Jackson on Saturday. And we are so excited to have them here in the studio. And they made it easy on me. I got Don and John. John and Don. I can remember that. No problem. And you guys are from Open Rail. Yes, ma'am. And you'll be playing at the Marquet this Saturday. Yes, ma'am. Seven o'clock. And the crowd goes wild. Yes. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) No, that's super exciting. And if you stay tuned for a little bit during this interview, we are going to give away two tickets to the show this weekend. It's like 10 degrees outside. You can go to the Marquet, super warm, have great entertainment, Beautiful. have some fun. You're not going to be outside this weekend, I don't think. So No. Unless no, you're a, no, you this, know. This a, is definitely an inside show. Yeah, Eskimo or, a, you know, husky dog. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um, okay. Well, welcome, welcome. Um, I guess, first off, tell everybody a little bit about yourselves. Go for it, John. Well, John Cardwell's my name, mandolin player for Open Rail, and... Uh, We've been doing this for 13 years, and every year it just gets better and better, and we have more fun. And you will find out when uh, <laughs> you come to a show, when we get on stage, we have fun. Yep. We like to have our crowd to participate along with us, too. Yes. Yeah, so we have fun with them, you know. So we enjoy it, and... Uh, been doing it for, like he said, 13 years. My name is Don Titus. I play the banjo. I'm the blunt of all the jokes. So when you come to the Marquet, if you would happen to come, you'll find out that uh, they really tease the banjo player quite a bit. <laughs> so so but you're I'm the just, jokey, not the joker. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Do you need a hug? Yeah, sometimes I do. Not oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> I this can see how I, this is going to go. Yeah, I can too. It, that's it. So. Poor guy. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we uh, I've been playing the banjo for 47 years. No way. Yeah, I've been playing a long time. I've and someday he'll learn how to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's what I get. <laughs> we want to introduce our banjo player. He's the best banjo player we got on stage right now. That's how yep. he introduced me. So, you know. Uh, Bless his little heart. He needs yeah. two hugs. Yeah. Yeah. So... But it's a lot of fun. Crowd seems to enjoy it. I, I take the worst of it, but I have fun. You know, we all have fun and enjoy it. We've been doing this for a long time, and we get to travel a lot. We uh, There's a lot of stories and a lot of memories we've shared. We've been doing it, like I said, for 13 years. We have <laughs> we play a lot of churches. We play a lot of festivals. We play a lot of fairs. We Until the pandemic hit. And yeah, then, I know. Yeah, and when that hit. Bummer. Uh, yeah, the bottom fell out of everything for everyone, so it just wasn't us, but... Things are slowly coming back around again. So, is that something in your wildest dreams you would have ever imagined that as a band, like yeah. we are literally not going to get to play for two years because there's a global pandemic? Like none of us in our wildest dreams would have ever thought of that. Something out of a movie. On the it's head. crazy. Yes. Yes, it was. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Well, hopefully we're. Pastor. Going this way, and and uh, yes. we'll move on. So, how did Open Rail 
become open rail? Well, it started probably 15 years ago. Well, I'm thinking it was probably a group of guys in a garage that said, we want to make fun of a banjo player, so we need to start a band. (laughs) We were actually a group of guys in a, in a living room. Oh, okay. <laughs> not a That's close. <laughs> and uh, we would get together one night a week in my brother's living room and just play music and sing and have fun. And uh, we needed a banjo picker. So, And a brunt of all the jokes. So Yes. Yeah, so uh, one of our friends, we didn't know Don at the time, so one of our friends said, I know a guy that's it's really good. I don't think he's picking with anybody. Maybe he, so we got a hold of him and he came down and, uh, after about two weeks, three weeks, he said, why are you guys staying, staying in this living room? Mm-hmm. Why aren't you out somewhere? And we're mm-hmm. like, well, never really thought about it. We just doing it. Just having fun. Yeah. Actually, I told him if I'm going to be a part of this, we're going to have to get out. You guys are way too good harmony and all that to be sitting here in the living room. So, so that's how that all got started. Gotcha. And we didn't have a name for the band. Okay. So you know, if you're going to have a band, you got to have a name. You kind of have <clears> to <throat> have a name. It's important. And I didn't want, I told him, I said, I don't want a band that's got something, something boys or something, something creek. Right. Or river or anything <laughs> like that. You know, because <laughs> most bluegrass band is fat white. Yeah. It is, now that I think yeah. about it. Yeah. Right. So uh, we was racking our brains trying to come up with a name and... and uh, Bubba, Brian Eisen, is our tenor singer. He come in one evening and said, got a name. What is it? And he said, open rail. <laughs> and we all kind of looked at each other and went, well. All right. It's a name. Let's go with it. Stuck like a hair in a gravy bowl. <laughs> and it just kind of grew on us, and we kept it and stayed with it. And there we are. Like so what does, what, where did he come up with that name? I have no idea. Didn't ask. Don't care. I had no idea. Sounds good to me. Yeah, he just said, what do you guys think? We're cool. easy. We're easy. Who's yeah. going to book us first? <laughs> yeah. We, we were wanting something to do with trains. Yeah. Right? And he came up with open rail. Love that. So how does one go from, um, you know, just sitting around, hanging out in, in your brother's living room to, you know, starting to play shows? Because it has to obviously, you know, grow and people need to, you know, well, get, you get to know you. You kind of have to start going out doing shows for nothing. Oh, darn it. <laughs> Just to get yeah. seen and heard. Well, we had a little bit. Brian played in a group that played out. He played professionally for a while. I played in other groups. So when the conglomeration come together, yeah, you know, by context that we all knew and other people, oh, don't you playing a bit? Yeah, come, yeah, we'll book you. Yeah, you know, so okay, it worked a little. So bit you kind of like had that. a name a little bit, yeah. Well, people knew, knew they knew parts of you. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, from other bands. Yeah, because Don, like I said, he's been playing banjo for eighty-seven years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so a lot of a lot of bluegrassers know him. And, and Brian was involved in it for years, so a lot of bluegrassers know it. Yeah. For 87 years. <laughs> no, not, not, <laughs> oh, I'm right. Uh, gotta love them. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so good. So 13 years later, here we are. Global yes. pandemic and, and all of that. We've survived. And, and uh, keep it on picking. So bluegrass. How did you get into bluegrass music? I was raised on bluegrass music. Really? Yeah. My my dad, you know, he he could play anything that had a string on it. That's awesome. And that's all he ever played was bluegrass. So I was raised on it. And I'm sure Don was. No, I wasn't. He wasn't raised on it. He was, no. of course, he was around before bluegrass even. Well, I was going to say, he, you know, he rode his horse to school. <laughs> but yeah. Well, not only that, I mean, this is what I get, you know. Uh, Jesus signed Don's yearbook. You know, I get that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. I said, I'm older than dirt, you know, all that good stuff, you know. But I look good for being 87 years old, I guess. So that's all. <laughs> I mean, I think so. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll have to talk skincare later. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I appreciate it. Anything that'll help. <laughs> Shoot. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I I just I never was raised on it. I never heard the banjo at all till I was like twenty one, and uh, I heard it, and uh, 
some guy took it, it was eight track tape, put it in. So there was something you listen to, and he put it in. And I said, "What's that?" He said, "That's a banjo, a bluegrass banjo." Hmm. Well, I, I went through me like a fire, and I just went out and bought me one and started playing. Just, had you played anything before? Any instrument guitar. before? I played guitar. Oh, so bit. you did play guitar, but mm-hmm. but are they completely different? Oh, yes. to play. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah, I could see that. They're very hard to play. So I will admit that if I literally, and I know people make fun of me, I'm like, if I had to play a stringed instrument, which God knows I have no talent whatsoever (laughs) other than running my mouth, we've established that a long time ago, I've always been fascinated with the banjo. I love the sound of it. I just think it's amazing. Me too. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's so unique. And what's a bluegrass band without a band? There there isn't one. You've got to have a band. kind of the heart and soul of it. Right. Well, I, I... you know, they always say, you know, I'll be wrong. Somebody, well, you're going to be late. With it. I said, they can't start without me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I kick off 90% of their songs. So <laughs> We've got the happy. And besides that, who would they pick on if you weren't there? Well, they make up for it when I show up a little late. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Well, when you're 87 years old, sometimes <laughs> Papa has a hard time getting there on time. <laughs> Guess what they call me? Guess what my nickname is? Band Paul. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> Bam Paul. When you said it, that's what made me. Yeah, Bam Paul is what my nickname is. As, as you can tell, we have fun. <laughs> that's the whole point, isn't it? You know, yeah, it is. why do what you're doing if it's not fun? And when we hit stage, we love that. We just do this. This is what we do. Good. Same thing. We don't. We don't put on no act. You what you get, what you see is what you get. <laughs> it's real life. It's real. Then life. they duke it out later after the show. It's fine. It's fine. So okay, so you all are playing the Marquee on Saturday night, and um, what could people expect from to to see and hear from your show? Are they all original songs, or do you play some sing along songs? We do some originals, uh, cover tunes. We do gospel. Yeah, you know, we do, you know, country traditional bluegrass. We'll do some country bluegrass we'll, style. We'll do some yeah. gospel. Uh, we'll do some acapella. Yeah. Uh, or acapoca, as Brian wants to call it. We just, uh, <laughs> we just do a, little, a variety of different stuff. And uh, anybody in the crowd knows the song, they want to sing it. Yep. Bring it on. <laughs> you want to sing it? Bring it. Yep. But absolutely. <laughs> but uh, we just have fun. Good. And lots of it. So um, when people come to the show, how long do y'all play? Depends on the venue. Some of them, you know, they want to do two sets. Mm-hmm. So maybe like two 45-minute sets. Mm-hmm. But I think the Marquee wants us to do one long set, like, mm-hmm. like an hour and a half. Okay. So... No problem. I don't really know the, the exactly only, how it's going to work, but uh, we don't know because people sit and you know you got to imagine yourself. We kind of put ourselves in in as a person yeah. in the crowd, also you know yeah. sitting there for that length of time, you know. So well, if they're all asleep, you probably it's probably time to pack it yeah, up. Yeah, probably time to quit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They won't be. Asleep. You know, it's past Pie Paul's bedtime <laughs> over there. Band Paul's <laughs> bedtime like past nine thirty. Yeah. yeah. Seven. So, so boy, you you fit right in. With us. <laughs> I'm gonna right start in. hanging out with these guys. <laughs> this is great. You, um, you fit right in. <laughs> all right, so James probably has all this information, but how do you get tickets um, if you want to come to the Marquee on Saturday night? MarqueeTickets.org. So you go to MarqueeTickets dot or Mark is it? Well, Mar- I think it's MarqueeJackson.org too. Right. Uh, okay. So, not the don't want to confuse people. The Marquee's <laughs> website's a little weird. Yes. Um, so the website is marquejackson.com, but when you click the ticket link, you are redirected to marqueetickets.org. Okay. If you go to marqueetickets.org, Google, Google Marque Jackson, and you you'll you get there. Mind. The link is in the description of the video. Yeah, I don't know how that all got so weird, but anyway, it's okay. We'll get you there. But no, open rail this coming Saturday, 7 p.m. at the Marque. Um, and this is also, James, didn't you say this is the last weekend for uh, Dennis, Dennis Reinhardt. Reinhardt's exhibit? Right. Uh, which is, have you guys seen it? No. Um, so Mr. Reinhardt, uh, he was here on the program not too long ago. He uh, is a retired teacher and coach here, but um, 
he goes around to these like um what's the best way to say hidden gems of our area um and takes nature photography so he has a show in the lobby at the marquee right now as well and he has what like 40 some pieces i think yeah right around 40 maybe maybe even 60 yeah and a a lot less than uh Bob a lot, yeah, <laughs> right. But it's all, and and what he does is he just finds these like crazy off the beaten path, like beautiful like uh, waterfalls and just really neat stuff, and um, photographs them. So we'll get to see it. So then you'll get to see it, and if you come to the show on Saturday, it will be your last chance to get to see that exhibit as well, and you can see that exhibit. As with the admission to your open rail um, tickets. Yes. Yes. Look forward to seeing yeah. anybody. Everybody. Everybody. I like to fill her right up. That's right. Yeah. Like I said, listen, it's going to be cold outside. The Marquet is gorgeous. It's warm. Yeah. There's. It's going to be a fun, fun show. Um, and so just come. How much are tickets? Fifteen. Tickets are ten dollars in Ooh. advance or fifteen dollars the day of the show. So get your tickets now by going to marketickets.org and you can buy them in advance and then you save yourself a little bit of money too. All right. All right. So do you guys buy tickets for your show? No. Oh. Not normally. Huh. How do you get in then? We sneak in the back. Oh, do you? Yeah. There is a back way. Yeah. I've been there a time or two. Yeah. yeah, back away. Yeah, uh, I don't remember buying tickets. <laughs> He's like, wait, was I supposed to do that all this time? <laughs> I just stand oh up and say, you can't play without me, so you guys like it. <laughs> you guys are a hoot. All right, so what do I do with them? You want to give these tickets away, James? Well, we've got a video here of these guys playing. Okay, uh, it's a little. It's a. It's from a. It's from a couple of years ago. <laughs> a few like, years yeah, ago, like Jen likes to say, it's from a few years ago. Few. Everything's a few years. Yeah. So uh, let's let's play this video, and then when we come back, okay, let's figure out how we're going to give away these tickets. All right, we'll be back on the other side. I knew it. <laughs> Oh, 
Now, they were just telling me, you are not going to believe this. The guys were just telling me that you all had never practiced that song. Yeah. Someone just asked you to play it, and you played it. We said, well, give it a shot, and that's what, what you got. That's so cool. <laughs> that's just how talented these guys are and unbelievable. Um, wow. I would have thought that that was just in your repertoire of, of no, you know, many yeah. songs. And I don't think we've done it since. No. We haven't. Watch, watch what happens Saturday. You know Saturday <laughs> is coming. Know it's coming. <laughs> well, yeah. We're going to put you on the spot, see if you can do it again. <laughs> oh, we can do it again. It may not sound exactly like that. <laughs> well, how the heck do you do that? Like, if you never practice something, how, how do you do that? Hey, I've been on, I went and played uh, here a while back with a, uh, a band they just I went to a picnic. Somebody asked me, and they had this the Schumann Brother Band. They called them from over in Ohio somewhere, and they played keyboards and then they played pop, country, jazz, blues. And uh, told me to bring my banjo. I sat up there, went around there with them, played every song that they played. Never heard probably ninety percent of them. Never heard them a lot. Played right along with them. And the guy in the, the leader of the band says, "How do you do that?" I said. I just know you. I just listen and know the music. I get the key you're in, and I'll go with it. You know, so that's what you do. That's what we all do. That just, or he's just really full of BS, one or the other. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you eat regular. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was on air, one and up. That's okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, we've said worse. Trust well, me. Um, no, that is so cool. I, I love that. And, and, um, you know, listen, there's bands that are just, there's people that are just uber talented and can play and, and whatever. And then there's ones that are on, <laughs> that are in boy bands, but anyways, um, <laughs> but, um, no, you guys are amazing. So where are some of the fun places that you've played, uh, since you've been, a, a band or a group? Oh, we've played. Because <laughs> you're not, you're from like the West Virginia and Gallup Police yeah. area? Well, I, you know, the, of course, Mark A, I always love playing theater. Yes. Right. Mark A, we've, you know, we've, and, and of course, we've done, you know, a few years back, we was a house band at the, at the yeah. REL Theater in Gallup Police. Oh, cool. We were house band there for three years, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, yeah. But, you know, We've been to Whitley City, Kentucky. You know, they have a big festival there. We go every year. Uh, we've been to Mount Airy. We, Mount Airy. We've been to Virginia. We did. Uh, we went to Indiana. We went to uh, uh, Michigan. We've been Tennessee. We went to Bristol, didn't we? Yeah. We've been, been, around, mean, we, we've been around the we've world. Been around Nashville. The world. We've played sometimes. Spigma. We've played. Yeah. Well, in 87 years, I'd say you've been quite a few places. <laughs> I have. <laughs> and in 2016 was the IMEA 2016 yeah, that, Band of the Bluegrass Band of the Year. That's so yeah, cool. IMEA. Yeah, IMEA. Yeah, Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, uh, we we've been around the home a little bit. We got a lot of tales and stories and memories. Well, That's you were just sure. telling me one off the air. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, we'll just keep it off. The <laughs> we'll air. just keep that a secret. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we will talk about it. Yeah. All right, so anybody interested in open rail tickets for this coming weekend, we're going to make this really, really hard on you. You're going to have to work for it. Are you ready? The first person that asks for the tickets gets them. On Facebook, go. Put it in the comments. Oh, Red Thompson Jr. in the house. What do you say, Kenna Lee? Hello. AKA, we just, I found out something about you, Red Thompson, today. What's that? What's that? Do you know that Red Thompson's name is not really Red Thompson? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> yeah, I think Donnie's one of the few that, that still calls him Kenna Lee. But. Yeah, I call him Kenna Lee. <laughs> did you know Red Thompson's name is really Kenna? 
Now I the, didn't. Now the whole world's going. Now back. they do because yeah. they've been watching <laughs> international <laughs> HD cable channel, fifteen the, Main Street TV. A few people know at the banks and maybe at the courthouse. <laughs> where I have to use my legal name. <laughs> but uh, but Mr. Titus and. And my dad worked at the same aluminum plant in Ravens. No, that's my dad. No, that's just you to call me 87. I didn't want you to get confused. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> and, and Donnie's dad was, was a great guy. He lived to be 84 years old. He built a house and sold it. He built guns. He's a very creative man. So I see where cool. Don gets his creativity from. <laughs> yeah. And wasn't your dad a good baseball player? Yes, he did. He had a chance to to be play for the Baltimore Orioles, and he I was born, and he didn't take that opportunity. So oh, so, so it's you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, well, you you need to come and be on stage with us Saturday night. You can really help them out a bunch. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you're the one. I'm the one. <laughs> No, that's awesome. And um, so, yeah, so Red Thompson, a.k.a. Kenna now, for the rest of <laughs> the time that I know him. Uh, um, <laughs> so your dads actually work together. So that's his how dad you kinda, and my dad. That's yeah. so cool. And, and, and I used to, well, I ain't going to get there. I got to tell you something when we get off air. But okay. He was a little feller, so I... We, I took care of him a lot, Ken Lee. That's why I, I call him Ken Lee. Ken Lee. Yeah. Well, I mean, interrupt, Ken Lee, don't do that. You know. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. When we got a little older, his mom and dad put in a pool, and and Don used to play around the pool for us in the evenings. So he, right. He'd play the banjo around the pool at pool parties that they'd have. Yeah. <laughs> They put it in a nice one. They put it in a, what you'd call a cement pond. Was- oh, one of the Beverly Hillbillies types. Yeah, yeah. Octagon shape. Yeah. You fancy. No, mom was fancy. Ah. And dad just did. You know, a- happy wife, happy wife. 100%. Yeah, so. I'm glad y'all know that. Yeah. So. Lesson to be learned today. Octagon, huh? Yeah. Now that's fancy. It was I mean, that's- fair to put in. Uh, yeah, we put it in ourselves. We didn't. Oh. We don't allow nobody to do any. That's the, we. We don't trust people too much. We sure. do our own work and wow. on everything. That seems like you'd be bouncing off the corners a lot. The corners are pointed out. You're in, so you don't bounce <laughs> off the corners. Oh. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> on a, you know. Do you get stuck in the corners? No, not, not no. too much. So I'm thinking, <laughs> was the octagon because y'all were really, really bad kids, and then that way your parents are like, you go to the corner, you go to the corner, you go to the corner, and there was eight of them. There wasn't eight of us. There was only three of us, and that was enough. Okay. Trust me on that. And probably Steve was the one. My baby brother was the worst. He probably did. You were the well. angel? Always. 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 Red, was he the angel? <laughs> I, I think Donnie kind of kept them all in check. The, uh, yeah, that's what I was Steve, Steve like Bruce Lee. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> it, when, when you went to Steve's room, there was posters of Bruce Lee yeah, everywhere. Yeah. And Farrah Fawcett. And, you know, <laughs> well, that. every guy that age had Farrah Fawcett poster, didn't didn't they? He got the mad one. At, he got mad at me. I draw the mustache on her. No, you did not. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> Yeah. Was it that poster, the yeah. same poster that every guy had in their room? Same one. Yeah. He's mad at me now. I mean, we talked about that here a while back. He said, I could have got a lot of money out of that poster, but you had to take permanent marker and <laughs> well, draw on her face. I just feel like that would make it more valuable. Oh, I did too. Like man. it's an original. I should have signed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on eBay. Try it and see. <laughs> People have bought worse. <laughs> You know, there, there's one thing I wanted to bring up to the guys about the music, uh, and um, I don't want to plug another station, but Bluegrass has kind of found a national home um, because of the internet, and I talked to Brian about this, WPAQ and Mel Airy has become yeah. almost a a kind of a home for Bluegrass, like WSM West for country music. Right. Sure. What's a station like that? What's it meant to the bluegrass bands around the country? That area is becoming a real national center for 
your type of music? That's a great question. Well, well, you know, you know as well as everybody wants to be on the Grand Ole Opry, so all the bluegrass people strive to try to get their material to that and get on there. I mean, that's that's what it's about. I mean, you've got no detour; you want to go straight, but you've got to follow all the crooks and crannies to get there. So, you know, but that's where it's all pushed out at. So. Is Mount Airy, that's the place where they have, like, the Andy Griffith stuff, right? Yes. Am I, okay, am I yes. thinking of the right place? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mayberry. Or Mayberry. Mm -hmm. Is it really there? Yes, it is. Like, is that where they filmed it? Or mm -hmm. is it just like a... I can't answer that question. I'm sure it was filmed in California. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they yeah. filmed it. Oh, well, we, yeah. But they did have a Floyd's Barbershop there. Yeah. Did they? And yeah, they, and they, went and got his hair cut yeah, there. Yeah, because Bob or Brian went and got his hair cut at Floyd's nice. while he was there. And they do have a... Uh, Andy Griffith Museum there. That's some cool. And stuff. some of the stars come in there to the to yeah. that one shop there and they sign autographs and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Very cool. So you guys have had your music on the radio? I don't know. We, I don't, you don't know? I don't know where our music has went. <laughs> no, they they were in they're on a national show called In the Blue. I've heard them on that. That's from Nashville. That's cool. Terry heard so. Yes. Well, so. you got one up on me. I've not heard that, so that's good. <laughs> well, you just ask Ken over there; he'll right. tell you yeah. all about yourself. I'm yeah. sorry about that. I should not have undis I should not have disclosed your. Yeah, it's on now. Sorry, buddy. Oh, no, that's all right. That's okay. <laughs> now, and they didn't tell on themselves, but I know they know this because they were there. They were on the Info Valley, and that's a national show. Yes, we was. On the what? Renfro Valley. Valley. Okay. Yeah, we played there. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Didn't you open? Did you open for Ronnie Millsap, or was he just there at the same time? He was just there at the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah. For those of you who might not know, Renfro Valley, and I used to live by it when I lived in London. It's in southern Kentucky, and right. it's a national right. old Bell time, Bell. old time kind of country music center. Nice. It's a community, isn't it? Yes. Store and yeah. restaurants. And yeah. But now the stores and the restaurants are all closed down now. Yeah, they are. Is that right? Yeah. It's been a while since I've been there. So. That's sad. Right down from Berea. Yeah. So what is the, while you're here, I think this is interesting. How, what are the origins of bluegrass music? How, how far back does it go? Wow. 30s? Nah, 30s, 40s, 38, yeah. Yeah, they all say Bill Monroe was the father of bluegrass music, but, but uh, it was around before. Yeah, because he kind of brought the up to the forefront. Yeah, the, the, that style of music out for the public to hear. What is it? How did um, how did it get started? Do you like like um, where did it get started? Bill Monroe kind of tagged the name for it. You know, Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boy. We have bluegrass, and coming from the state of Kentucky, bluegrass. Okay. Like you see, so he used part of that, and and there wasn't no banjo. It was, it was just like guitar and mandolin and bass at first, and then okay, and then he hired uh, he hired a few people that uh, come along later, like uh, Don Reno stepped in for a while, and then he went called to the service. Then he hired Flat and Scruggs, so they was part of the Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys. Okay. And they split off and made Flat and Scruggs, and it just kept, you know, growing from there. But Bill Monroe's one to give it bluegrass was bluegrass the name. So. Well, it's funny that bluegrass didn't originate with a banjo because when I think of blue jack, <laughs> bluegrass, I think of banjo. Yeah. Well, now when you think of banjo, just think of me and oh, honey, Van Paul. So you'll be all <laughs> Van Paul. I mean, it'll be on the daily now. Oh, okay. oh boy. <laughs> and, uh, I think nationally it got. It got a uh, push from WSM. They used to have, well, they yes. still do. I guess they bought it back, a Bluegrass Breakfast show. And, and, uh, it used to be the Martha White. Yeah, the Martha White Bluegrass Breakfast show. And now they've, re, they've reinvented that. They have a Bluegrass show again in the morning. I'm going to get fired for promoting other stations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, say it wasn't Brad, it was Kenna. It's not yep. the same. Okay, yeah. But, it's uh, his alter ego. They won't, they won't know who <laughs> They won't have a clue. You're safe. Yes, but, they, but they do have it. They do have a half an hour Bluegrass show again. It's a WSM tradition. Um, and um, so I think I think Bluegrass is, is really the brokers. Was my good friend Booker Rick Rick Modisett, 
and, and you guys know him. I'm sure he probably booked some of your shows. I don't know, but anyway, he's from Parkersburg, and he said the acoustic and bluegrass acts is the easiest to, to book right now. Really interesting. I because could see that. It, because they they don't need as much equipment mm-hmm. to more places as what I'm the book of. When you think about it, bluegrass music is such a pure music. Yeah. Because you've got you got five like us, we got five guys on stage all playing five different instruments and harmony and you mesh this all together mm-hmm. and it comes out the way it does without no trickery, without no it's just pure music at its yeah, like and that's what makes it so beautiful and so unique and um, so much fun to listen to, honestly. Plus those mouths of yours. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we're the calm ones. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. We're, you, 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 this is calm. The storm is about to come. When you, <laughs> we, we, yeah, we, we got old Mark. And I, you know what? I still think if we put that blue hat and that vest on, we'd have Ernst. Because yeah. that's who he puts me in mind. Ernest got, yeah, see, I first met him. That's who he puts see, the me other me. members of the band, as, as he was saying, is Mark Kenny. Yes. Mark he's, Kenny. He's, from, he's from Benton, Ohio. Uh, Brian Ison. We call him Bubba. Right. And uh, he's from uh, Beaver, Ohio. Beaver. Yeah, and we, then Jeff Fields. Now how do you say that when we're on stage? Jeff, Jeff Fields. <laughs> you know, he's, and he is from Parts Unknown. And parts Unknown right mm. now. But he's from West Virginia. That's all we need now. And like we said before, we've had our shots. So we're, we're good. We're for, good. For Saturday night. So, but uh, he introduces Bubba. We gotta yeah, tell yeah, us. I, you know, normally I get on the you know stage and I'll say I'm gonna introduce the band and I always say this is Brian Ice and uh, he's from Beaver. And before I get anything else in my mouth, he'll say, and the rest of them come from natural, natural parents. parents. <laughs> and, <laughs> but so, anyway, uh, yeah, we do have fun on stage. Yes, yes, we do. I like it. Yeah, yeah, we do. So, come out, enjoy. Saturday evening with us. We'd, we'd enjoy it. Absolutely. And, you know, and that's the whole, like, listen, we've all been cooped up. We've made it through the holidays. We've been not able to do anything for the past couple of years. Like, come out and have fun with these guys on Saturday night. It's going to be a hoot, a blast. You're going to hear beautiful music and a lot of fun jokes and, and a lot of fun uh, giggles along the way. Yeah, at my expense, but that's okay. <laughs> And Bubba's beaver parent. <laughs> right. Yes. But yeah, uh, Mark A, 7 o'clock, open rail, and be there. Yes, be there. Yes. Or we will find you. Thank you very much for having us. Oh, well, thank you. Is there anything else you want to tell our viewers while you're here? Or do you really want to run out because you don't want to be here with me anymore because I'm probably, you know, driving you crazy? Or offended wouldn't you? Wanna, wouldn't want to be any other place but here. So My heart know. is so full now. Oh, I'm, I feel good now. Good. You got any questions, Queen Lee? Um, no, just uh, it was nice to hear you guys doing "Man of Constant Sorrow," and uh, you know that movie. Uh, oh, boy, they were out there. It was a lot of the bluegrass groups really owe. Um, there was success today to that movie. Yeah, it, I would say that. It, it, it got it kicked off. Yes, it off. Definitely, like, definitely give it a boost. Yeah. Yeah. You you know, just like just like the Deliverance movie, the ones that they, <laughs> and they said, and they it kicked it off for me in the 70s. And then they say, Don, you've really changed your looks. <laughs> so, yeah. You know. <laughs> Boy, you're covered up on that one, aren't you? Uh, I never thought of that. <laughs> oh, I do all the time. <laughs> And no, I don't work at Walmart, which the original guy does. Out in- I'm just going to tell you, if you start playing that song, I'm out. Done. <laughs> da, 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 <laughs> yeah, that one. If you start talking about pretty mouths, we're done. Oh, oh my goodness. You, you We've know. run out of chatter. Say. <laughs> she went there. Let's get out. No, just kidding. You know, just one more thing before before you break up here today. You know, that was, I worked for the movies then, and, and Matt Fields, I worked for him, and he, he explained that that movie was a limited release. It wasn't supposed to be, it, that movie was not supposed to be what it became. Sure. It was, it was a limited release in 10 cities, and the music was so 
endearing to people. That movie became a smash hit and led to many albums. And I don't know what the music made. The, the movie made forty-two million, which Matt said was a a minor hit. Uh, and but the music, the music, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it blew yeah. up. Yeah. Thirty. I saw a thirty-year-old sing a twenty-year-old singing songs from the nineteen thirties, and it was amazing. <laughs> well, that was due because of uh, Eric uh, uh, Marshall Brickman and Eric Wiseman. Uh, they was the two guys that performed all the banjo and all that stuff on that and all that stuff. There. It was good. You know. Well, it doesn't yeah. hurt to have George Clooney in a movie too. <laughs> no, that just didn't, saying. That didn't help yeah. it. Doesn't hurt. It. Doesn't hurt. It's just he's no, just but pretty. I'm in a tight spot. <laughs> But you know, it just goes to show when you when you're in the creative activities, you never know what something might lead to. And certainly, that movie <gasps> did to a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, you don't know how many people are going to see you on TV today and be like, <laughs> "Movie, we don't, we don't want to go see them." Guys. Hollywood's going to be calling. <laughs> Yeah, so? they yeah. they they still airing the Three Stooges. They don't need two more. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shoot. No, this has been a lot of fun, you guys, and we appreciate you spending the morning with us. Well, thank you for having us. Well, you're welcome anytime. And uh, anytime you want to come and, and bring your uh, picking things, then you can come and play for us, too. Well, we brought them today, but we just left you're them out there. picking things. Yeah, we're picking oh. things. We brought them today, but we just left them out there in the cold. And I know. Now they're going to be cold. You're yeah. going to have to have a talk with it. To yeah. Apologize. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, next time. All right. Bring your picking things. We will. Thanks for having us again. That would be a good instruments. Yes. All right. Well, we know that you are busy and you have to get ready for your show. So, uh, 7 o'clock, open rail, Saturday night at the Marquee. Tickets are only $10 if you get them in advance. So, you can go to marqueetickets.org or at the door you can get them too. They're going to be $15 there. So, and you get to see um, the last day of Dennis Reinhardt's uh, display there of his beautiful photography as well. Make sure you guys take a look at that. Look at that. You'll enjoy it. I heard, I heard somebody else talking about that the other day. Yeah, but. it's amazing. And if you come to Archinetti's, there's some pictures in there, too, of his. So. <laughs> but, but if we come here, we're going to be able to get the chicken stuff because you ain't going to cook. I'm worried. Listen, I've got to cook. I just could... Use more. More. I got yeah. You. Get more out faster. Yeah. 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 Something like that. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, get out of here. All right. All right. Be gone with you. Thank Adios. you. I've weathered to do. Right. Adios, amigos. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Of course. My pleasure. All right. Weather, weather, weather. So the deal is... Um, we don't really know what the weather is going to do. Again, another storm for the third weekend in a row headed um, this way. I don't think it's going to hit us. I think it's going to pass us by, which is fantastic. But today, if you have not been outside yet, it is cold, cold, cold. And um, the good news is that um, that's not actually so move on to Thursday there with that graphic. But um, the good news is it was literally two at my house this morning, but it was also uh, is supposed to get up to close to 40 today. Um, so hopefully we'll get some melting going on. So today high of 38 and then low overnight of 23. But then on Friday, once again, back down to seven overnight. And um, then Saturday, Friday, Saturday, there is that little chance of some, some flurries and whatnot, but I think that, um, I think it's going to pass us by, so no problem. There you go. Hi. Hey. Oh, we got, we got we Kenna got, here we got, the, on yeah. the Kenna table Kenna Thompson. Now. Kenna. So, all right, so we're talking about your real first name, Red. <laughs> yeah, Red. Now, I. Who knew? He, Pete's got a trick name like that too, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he does. Pete's so real Pete, first name is Merrill. Is that right? Marvin. Marvin. Marvin, Marvin yeah. Pete Wilson. So the telegram is supposed to be a reliable source of news for the community. <laughs> and we're not even telling it's the truth about based on we're not even telling the truth about what the writers' names are. Yeah. What is going on? I don't know. Well, you, you know there's there's that uh, um <laughs> in uh, in authors, you know, they always change their name. Like in Hollywood, 
Oh, it's a Rogers. stage name. It, it so it's is. like George Clooney. That's not it his is. real name. Or is, is. no. Is that his real name? Yeah, I think George Clooney. Because his yeah, his mom was something Ro- Clooney. Or his aunt Ro- was Rosemary yeah. Clooney, yeah. That that was my dad's name and, and Kenna uh, is your dad's name? I used to get I used to get male intended for women for a long time. <laughs> and, and then they started changing the girls' names to McKenna, so that kind of stopped. Gotcha. So, they, uh, <laughs> so where did red come from? I'm just curious. Uh, once and upon how- a time, his hair wasn't quite so white. <laughs> some, some of the older people remember me when I had red Well, James is that. That'd be one. I remember when you had red, <laughs> red-er hair. And when I interview, I used to interview James his dad a lot. Okay. He he was one of the smartest people I've ever interviewed. His dad's just if you don't know Richard Hamilton, he just he just a book of knowledge. <laughs> and and his mom too. I mean, they were both teachers. His dad was a guidance counselor. I had red hair then. Buzz remembers me. Buzz would have remembered me with red hair. Buzz Fisher. And um, you know, we used to work a lot. No kill. When I when did, when did you graduate, James? Two thousand six. Okay, so I was working Oak Hill when when you was in high school. Oh yeah. So I'm, I'm, like Donnie, I'm showing my age a little bit now. Um, but and you I'm, mentioned Buzz. You got you got a good Buzz story to share because <laughs> there's no shortage of good Buzz stories. Because I know you guys carpooled to ball games and stuff a lot. Oh Buzz, I tell you, Buzz was just. I think I'll never forget. I think that the happiest I ever saw Buzz was the first time he ever walked in the Davis Stadium press box. I think he was just blown away that Oak Hill had something like that. And he, he just – and, of course, uh, when he called the state state championship. Game, yeah. How fun. I think uh, all four of them, the three girls when they lost and the boys when they actually won, I think that – I think that just, just meant a lot to him. But – and sometimes Buzz would be. Uh, some sometimes when Oak Hill wouldn't do so well, he he, <laughs> you know, he'd get a little frustrated sometimes. <laughs> yeah, somebody, I think it must have been JJ told me a story recently. Buzz was broadcasting one time, and it was a you know a game in a season where Oak Hill wasn't very good, and the the board operators weren't doing a good job switching back and forth between uh-huh. the ads, and they left Buzz on the air. <laughs> He's just oh, no. <laughs> we won't repeat what the, he said. The open mic note moment. Yeah. 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 Hit that off button sometimes. So yeah. It's yeah. commercial button. <laughs> we'll be back at put the technical difficulties. Yeah, technical difficulties. <laughs> like some elevator music starts playing. <laughs> that's always you out in in your in any kind of electronic media, that's that old good old technical difficulty sign. <laughs> they used to be yeah, we need one, one of those. In I here. know, right? We would that would spend more time on the screen than, than we do. <laughs> no, it just says James is is trying to fix the buttons. <laughs> James is unplugging James and plugging has everything unplugged back Jennifer's in. Jennifer's microphone. <laughs> that's better that way. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. just needs to get her to stop talking. I used to, <laughs> I used to run the board, and I remember one night we we lightning delays, and that was now that's always fun for the broadcasters because some of these games go to one or two. Yeah, o'clock you just got to talk and fill up some time. Yeah, yeah. Well, or I mean, I guess you could just go back to music or whatever, but then you're just sitting there waiting. Yeah. yeah. I remember one time when. I know, I know we was definitely breaking the fire laws up at Vinton County. <laughs> <laughs> we Megs, it, it was it's, Megs had a player that died in the game. Mm-hmm, I remember that. So Vinton County was trying to accommodate them, so they agreed to play at one o'clock on Saturday. And Vinton County had some kids taking, and Megs kind of returned the favor a little bit. Vinton County had some kids taking the ACT in Athens, and they got back late. And the weather was bad, and it was raining, and, and this was at the old field. There must have been 50 people in the Benton County press box. It was probably designed for 12. Oh, no. <laughs> I think everybody on the committee, it was the longest pregame show in the history of our station. <laughs> I think everybody in Benton County got on the radio. <laughs> 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 and, uh, 
you know, we, we've had a lot of good times covering sports over the years. There, there's always, when, when sports, when something goes wrong, that's your funnest times. It's not fun at the time, but when you look <laughs> back on it. It's really, they make for the best stories, doesn't it? Oh, it does. We've had lightning delays. We've had... Well, like this year, we went over at uh, Nelsonville, and it rained, and fortunately, some nice people from Nelsonville gave me a tent to sit under, so I didn't get drenched, but yeah, those nights are, when you're doing sports, <laughs> it's nights like that, that that make the memory books, so bad weather, and car delays, and your car breaks down, and... Yeah, you've had, you've had some experience with that, <laughs> run, running out of gas... Yeah, yeah, I'm not you, the best to check the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, red, red. How red many times operate, has he yeah. run out of gas? Yeah, red operates under the belief that you don't need to get gas until <laughs> you are literally out of gas. <laughs> yeah, not a good practice. Don't don't practice what, what I preach. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> it makes sure that tank's filled up. It's uh, we we stay pretty busy, and people don't know how busy a small town is until you're media person or a teacher or a social worker or maybe a police officer <laughs> That's yeah. when you, uh, or a restaurant owner. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> you know, uh, and I'm sure that you have nights <laughs> to where things don't go. <laughs> Sometimes. But your food's very good. It's the best place in town and it gets oh, great thanks. reviews on Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So thank you for all of you that have contributed. Well, that might be a fun show sometime. Read Bad Yelp, Yelp reviews. Yelp reviews. <laughs> oh, it would be fantastic. We should yeah. have you should you should do a show live from Marks and Eddie's one day. You we could do really that. Do a show and interview some of your customers and <laughs> we could do that. Get that lady that wanted to uh, do a seance or whatever upstairs talking <laughs> yeah, about the ghosts. That was weird. Yeah, get that lady in here. <laughs> yeah. Those make the best guests. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. So, yeah. So, if you all haven't heard this story, this is a true story. Evidently, there was a lady coming to Rio to talk about Supernatural. Uh -huh. She was, like, going to give a like a speech or whatever about uh -huh. it. So, they brought her through. She was driving to Rio and somehow was driving past the restaurant. So, I get to the restaurant. It's like a Friday night, and there's this rando lady upstairs of the restaurant walking around and the staff is just freaking out because they know that I don't want anyone up there because it's not meant for customers or whatever. It's like offices and stuff. They're like, we couldn't stop her. We couldn't stop her. And she was up there and she's like, I'm a medium. I just, I had to, I was driving by this place. It just drew me in. I had to, I had to find out what was up here. I just yeah. had to. Yeah. It was weird. Did you tell her it was chicken tenders? What was up there? No. She so then she went on to <laughs> I was kind of like believing her for a minute and then she was like, "Okay, so I'm getting a lot of civil war soldier like stuff." And I'm like, yeah. "Well, that's very possible." Like, yeah. you know, cuz the building was built in like I think it was 1825 or something like wow. that. Um and then she goes, and I'm looking at you, and I'm getting Milky Ways, Milky Way <laughs> bars. And I'm like, I hate Milky Way bars. Like, I yeah. loathe Milky Way bars. So I'm not exactly sure where she well, was going know. with that. Maybe it was like. I don't know. Getting the opposite or whatever. But I finally, I was like, okay. It's like you know. Friday night. Get out. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. People so, are interesting. Yeah. This but she interesting just rando characters. walked in the front door and yeah. walked upstairs. Yeah. Like, Okay. <laughs> You know, I, I bet I bet you find this in your business. Uh, um, when we travel, my late wife and I traveled. We always yelped. Yeah. And we we always drove by chains to go to local places. Sure. I bet you get some traffic off thirty five and thirty two. People doing the same thing. You have no idea how much traffic it, it's yelp. people don't understand how many people travel through this town or stop in this town or the area to to eat or or whatever or stay it's yelp that small it's yelp the equalizer for small businesses do you see it that way um i would think you know there's a bunch of different sites so you have yelp you have TripAdvisor, um and and i think so like for example and the first time this blew my mind because i didn't know how it worked 
when we first opened the restaurant. And that was, I asked these people, I said, we're just traveling through whatever. I said, how'd you get here? They said, we picked up our phone and we asked Siri what the best restaurant in Jackson, Ohio was. And she flat out said, your restaurant. Hey Siri, what's the best restaurant in Jackson, Ohio? We'll see what she thinks. You're the highest rated option. 4.5 stars on Yelp. Isn't that so cool? So if you, so that's how they got there. So I think that's what a lot of people do is they say, okay, well, you know, what's a good place here where, or in like, what's the best restaurant near me or whatever. And, you know, and then she does give you a list. Like if you're not interested in our place, it'll give you, you know, any mm -hmm. of the other, you know, places too. Well, I think Rowdy's maybe second. And well, yeah, I mean, this isn't necessarily a top 10 or anything, but the first, the first search results are Archinetti's spot on main Michael's homestead country market in Wellston and Rowdy smokehouse. Yeah. Those would probably be the most searched for, I would guess. So. You, you know, uh, but the first time we went to Nashville, um, we went down 71 and stopped in Carrollton, Kentucky. And we did just what James did. And we drove by. Carrollton's a town about Jackson size. We must have drove by 50 chains on a four lane and went up a hill and on a two lane up a hill to a place called Coop Steiner. Yeah? And I, and now this was seven miles off the interstate. Good for you, though. And all the vehicles were from out of state. It was the number one place in town. It was an old diner that sold Southern Fried Chicken. It was oh, amazing. Yes. I mean, it's, it, Yelp and, and, and TripAdvisor and all those. Small businesses swell by them. It really... They are very important... Yeah, because the locals and it's important to leave the reviews too. Like, and don't just leave a bad review. Like, if you're in a cool place, like leave a review about it. Hotel, anywhere you're at, just leave a good review. Because you don't have the the chains have the chains get the best locations because they have the most money. Cracker Bell, McDonald's, Wendy's, which are all great places. They all have yeah, their, totally they all have their. Their, their purpose, and, and they they feed a lot of people, and they feed a lot of people that's in a hurry. And, but a lot of times when you're on a vacation, you you like the local places. I know I do. I we do too. And there's only one of those usually, one or two. And so it's not the same as in your town. You're going to another town. You want to try something different. Absolutely. So I, I think it's I think it's great that the small businesses has some kind of vehicle. You know, and, and speaking of our area and, you know, plugging just how many cool local businesses we have right here in our area, even restaurants. I mean, I don't know a town of, of this size that has as many locally owned places. I mean, it's we're really fortunate if you think about it. Oh, Jackson kind of bucks the trend of yeah. kept the downtown together. Because in my hometown, there wasn't a locally owned business after 1980, hardly. It's not, it was, when I came to Jackson, I was surprised how many locally, still local owned businesses. And, and these people work for you. It's their, it's their business. It's their livelihood. So I think, I think they give you the extra mile here on their local businesses. And we appreciate them so much for, for sticking with us and, and uh, advertising with Total Media. And, mm -hmm. And not only that, they do a great job because it's a lot of the our local businesses. They don't have seventy eight other locations to rely on. You know, they, sure, it's them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you either do it or don't do it. You mm -hmm. know, and and the buck stops with you. So you know, we appreciate our local businesses. And and, and you mentioned the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things we did when the pandemic started. We had a meeting. We got to go out and help our local. We wrote stories about our local businesses to try to help them. Because That's right. The pandemic hit them harder because the same thing. They don't have 800 locations around the country to help them. Now, some of them do. Some of the bigger chains might. but And we and they're great, too. And not, Absolutely. We support, Everything, everybody has their place, you know. 
they do. And, and, you know, we have great businesses in Jackson, whether they're national chains or locally owned. We have a good mix. And that, that makes for a strong community. You know, and I think what's so important, and then we'll get out of here for the day, is, you know, I love the fact that, like, in our area, the small business owners and the chain business owners, you know, we get together and we talk and we, you know, collaborate and we, you know, text each other. Hey, has this happened to you today? Because, you know, I had a weird day. Did this? It, oh, yeah, it happened. We had a weird day, too. And, you know, like, can I borrow some fryer oil? And, you know, and, and you you have a choice to make in a small community. You can either try to fight each other or you can just be this ginormous force of, you know, small business owners and whatever. And I think that in our area, we've all chosen to help each other out. And, and I think that really shows, um, you know, all the time, you know, we're all the time calling, you know, Nathan at Rowdy's for something or the spot or coffee for a beer or, you know, something. And, and if everyone just works together, it makes for such, um, just, such a stronger community, I think. Oh, I think so. I think we're, we're lucky here. And, and you know, I want to throw out to, uh, uh, to the police and the first responders and the fire departments. Yeah. There's people, if there's a fire this morning, it's seven degrees this morning, and if there's an emergency, it's, they're right there. Yes, <laughs> they are. And the rest of us are whining and crying about the weather. They have to be in it. <laughs> so. so, and helping people. So, yeah. Well, this has been fun. Yeah. yeah. And uh, thank you, Red, for stopping you, Red. by. Or Kenna. Kenna. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it was nice. And, and go out and see Open Rail. Dude. Yep. Get your Please tickets do. Yeah. online now. Five, save $5. Buy them in advance. Yep. Marquetickets.org. Love that. And um, they are, if nothing else, if you're not a bluegrass fan, um, I think that you will, number one, and, and just – appreciate their talents so mm -hmm. much but also they are hilarious and they have fun and it will just be like <laughs> you'll go you'll enjoy music you'll chill out and then you'll laugh and have yep. a good time too yep. you know the guys are a little modest i don't know if they mentioned it i don't think they did they were the national bluegrass group of the year in 2016 they did uh, somebody they, mentioned they, that. they did they they're not they're that. not so modest that they didn't mention that <laughs> So the, you are seeing some national, nationally recognized talent on on the Saturday night. It's going to be a, those guys; they're top notch. You're going to see a great show. That's right, and it all started in their living room. Yep, pretty cool. All right. Well, is there anything else we needed to talk about? Oh, I think we're ready to get out of here. Okay. Uh, listen, it is very, very cold outside. It's supposed to warm up to close to 40 today, but <clears throat> this morning, very, very cold. As of right now, it is a balmy 14 degrees. And um, so check on your friends, neighbors, pets, all of that stuff, and uh, should be a bit warmer as the day goes on. So have a wonderful day, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye, Thanks guys. For watching. Have a good day.